Hello Hawk, Hi. how do you do? I'm alright, how are you? I'm fine. So it's the final day here at uh, MLG Anaheim. How has it been for you this far? Um, it's been okay. I've only dropped one series to Don Rigu, which was 1-2. If I would have beat him, I would have been first in my group, which would have been really nice, but shit happens and hopefully I can make it to the finals anyways. Talking about Don Ragu, uh, when did you realize that he was that good as he is? And is he showing his like skill level or is he playing extra good here in America? Um, I knew he was good before he started doing well in GSTL or he won that one tournament that was like the same time as DreamHack with the similar prize pool in Korea. Um, LG. L yeah, the LG tournament or whatever, 3D. Um, he was really good before that. We played on ladder a lot, we talked a lot, and I said, you know, you're really good, you're going to do well, just give it time and all that. Um, I think he's playing pretty much how good he plays on Korea. Not any better, not any worse, so hopefully he continues to play that well and uh, he shows some good games. During the first era of StarCraft 2, you were one of the strongest players in North America. You won the first MLG, yeah. if I'm not yes, incorrect. And then you moved, uh, joined T Team Liquid, moved to Korea. Mm -hmm. It seemed that you were extremely focused, motivated to play, yeah. but you didn't get the results. Uh, can you walk us through that that uh, period for you and how you handle it? Um, like like you said, I was putting in a lot of hard work. I was working harder than almost anybody, even the Koreans. Um, it just comes down to a lot of mental preparation. Like I had a lot of nerve issues. I really wasn't as focused as I should have been. I just I never played well in tournaments compared to ladder or anything else. So. Uh, once I started playing better in tournaments and getting the right mindset and being confident in my play, I started playing better and then I just got unlucky. I played against like, you know, MVP in the Super Tournament who ended up, I like lost to him round one, but then he ended up winning it. Then I lost to Inca in GSL and he ended up going to the finals. And then I lost to uh, Pulp Prime in the World Ch or whatever, the Super Tournament. M MVP was World Championship. But then I lost Pulp Prime in the Super Tournament and he ended up winning it. So I just ran into some bad luck and uh, Luckily at DreamHack and Home Story, I didn't and I won. Do you think that uh, how the brackets develops or are randomly generated is, uh, how to say, has too big of an effect of results for individual players? Yeah, but I mean, it's the fairest system overall. Like if it was just basically tournaments deciding like, oh, we want to match this player versus that player, uh, you know, there'd be a lot of arguments and biasism as far as, you know, like you get placed against someone bad, of course you're happy, but if you get placed against someone good, then you're like, what the hell? So I think, the most unbiased system is the best. Like even for MLG, we ended up with four liquid in one group out of five or six people, and uh, that's obviously not ideal. But we can't really argue because it's by a number system, so we agree with that, and it's fine. Uh, after the win, or like, can you just tell us a little bit uh, what made it happen for you at Dreamhack Summer and then Home Story Cup? Because making a back-to-back -back in this kind of environment is extremely extremely hard yeah um dream hack i was just playing pretty well i practiced a, a lot going into it and i was fairly confident and then i think when i played against july i just played really really well and i pretty much figured i was going to win the tournament after that even if i played bomber um, fortunately for me i played moon who i consider a little bit less skilled than bomber even though he's amazing as well especially now uh, I just, I was just confident in my play, and uh, the results backed it up. I had a decent, like a decently easy run to the finals. Obviously, you're gonna still have to play amazing players, but I didn't play MC, I didn't play Bomber. And then at home story, I guess my confidence just carried over. I just remained calm, played the style I wanted to play, and you know. Up to that point, had you in some way regretted your Korea stay because you didn't get the results that you wanted to? Well, I was talking to my teammates the other day about this. Uh, there was a point where everybody was excited to go to Korea and play in GSL. And then there was this period of time where, at least in the pro gaming circles, whatever, everybody was discussing it. We're like, you know, it's not really such a great thing to be in Korea because you've got all these foreigner tournaments for lots of money. And then you started seeing everybody kind of shift away from Korea. And it, it was only me and Jinro for a while in Korea. But now that Koreans are coming to foreign tournaments and they're raping everything, it's, it's, it's shifting back to, you know, you actually have to be in Korea to compete and win tournaments because right now, you know, Koreans are just, like even here, I think top two of like every group was Koreans and then there was like me and Hydra who both play second. So uh, I think it's going to become a necessity if you want to be one of the best players, you have to at least come to Korea at some point and uh, learn stuff. Because even me going to Korea, I of course got a lot better, but I learned how to be a better pro gamer as far as, you know, 
scheduling things, how to practice, the right mindset going into things, it just helps you as a person more than a player. Are you a little bit surprised that, for example, EG is going now to North America with the uh, EG house and not choosing Korea? Ex Fnatic has, has done the same in the past. Uh, we see other organizations also that the Koreans, like Rain, for example, going to North America. Are you a little bit surprised about it? Um, it's. It, I think it's going to be a pretty big test. I mean, I don't think a team's done it seriously yet. Like, I know EG's had a house for a while, but it wasn't a very serious thing. It was kind of just like guys living together and playing. If they can get it on a legitimate schedule with someone that's in charge and make sure the players practice and practice right, then I think it can work out. But uh, it's just so much easier in Korea because we have so much taken care of. For we have coaches, we have managers, we have people that can drive those places, we have people that can translate for us, we have all these really great players. Like Korea, there's a shit ton of great players. You can play ladder and that's good practice. Where in North America you play ladder, it's not good practice. So. Uh, it's going to come down to the individuals that are in each team, and that's pretty much it. Uh, except the playing, I understand that you more or less uh, play all the time that you are in Korea, but uh, can you tell us something of the Korean experience outside of the OGS house? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, the nightlife is really good. I mean, it depends what you're into. There's uh, a lot of different stuff you can do. There's like room salons, booking clubs, dance clubs, bars. Uh, it's really great to go out to dinner. Like, uh, the way Koreans eat dinner, or any meal, actually, is just pretty much everybody shares anything. So you just order a bunch of food and everybody shares, and it's very uh, communal, and you, you bond over it, basically, and you just talk and, you know, have fun and stuff like that. Other than that, we do, like, we played against Slayers and soccer right before we left. Uh, we just, you know, try to do stuff that we all enjoy and have fun. That's pretty much it. Uh, I would say that it's a uh, second wave of Western players coming to Korea now. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on it? Are you surprised? Uh, will that change anything for for you? You think will it, like that you have more people that you can hang out with, or will it not affect at all? Um, I'm always down to hang out with foreigner players. Like the FXO guys have been there for a while, and we hung out a little bit. Uh, it depends how easy it is. Like if someone says, "Hey, let's go to dinner," I'll come over. I'll say, "Sure," you know, I'll even buy dinner. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm happy they're coming over for the reasons I mentioned before. It'll be really nice to see how good they can do. Uh, I think the majority of people coming to Korea is going to be based on the like how motivated you are and with the right mindset because it's really tough, especially if you get into a Korean pro gaming house. Like, I think some of them want to go to Slayers. I don't know if that's going to happen, but if they did, Slayers is like one of the most hardworking teams, and uh, you can't you can't go in and try to half-ass it or anything. So it's going to be a big test period for foreigners and. Uh, I hope at least some of them do good, because if they don't, uh, you know, even in Korea, foreigners have this, like, notoriety for being lazy, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not lazy most of the time, sometimes I am, but I hope that uh, the foreigners that are coming over come with the right mindset and can do well. Would you say that uh, Slayers is the more, most uh, brood warish yes, team, that sure. they have the most strict? Jessica's a little, uh, she's, she's good at her job. She, she makes sure <laughs> everybody practices and you know what, it's, it's good because the players are posting results. You see, you know, Gonzi, Gonzi's doing really well here and then even Boxer is doing extremely well here. So uh, they're not doing so well in GSL, but hopefully they will soon. And GSTL, they've always been yeah. a really, really, really strong team. So, uh, you know, it's definitely the best practice. Um. Does it bother you in any kind of way that you are now dividing the Liquid team in North America with Chef and Tyler, as I understood it, and in Europe you have TLO, uh, Hader and uh, Rhett, and then you and Jindro, what did I miss someone now? No, uh, anyway, so. they are all over the continents. Yeah. Would it be better for you to have everybody in, uh, for example, Korea, in their own TL house or together with OGS? I would, I would love that. The problem with that and the problem with most teams doing that is it's extremely expensive to set up stuff in Korea. I mean. Corner teams like coming to these events because this crowd compared to uh, GSL or DreamHack compared to GSL or pretty much any foreigner tournament compared to GSL, the crowd base is way, way, way bigger here. I mean, it's really amazing. And uh, so you have to fly your foreigner players to foreigner tournaments to get that exposure for our tournaments and stuff. But it's so much more expensive and it's so much harder on the players to travel. Like, I have to go from here. Or Korea to here to Europe back to here back to Korea yeah. and like every flight's going to be like you know 18 hours or plus with layovers and stuff and you know that takes away from practice time and it makes you jet lag like it makes you exhausted it's just you know not good. You probably the one who has traveled the most to more or less all the tournaments. Uh, I assume that MAG has the biggest fan base, but 
how do you handle it? How, it seems that you haven't changed that much and that you're one of the players that actually have adapt kind of good to the fan base. Like, what do you think of the, this mess I saw yesterday? It was like, I don't know, a couple of hundred when you were si signing autographs at the MLG uh, booth? Yeah, uh, I haven't really faced the issue. Like, before this MLG, I pretty much could sign everything and take as many pictures as I wanted, and I still had time to do stuff, but unfortunately for this MLG, I have to basically tell people no. Like, I can't. Like, I have to go play, or I have to go eat, or, and even that, I'm doing, like, as much as I can, but there's always going to be people I'm going to have to turn away, and <laughs> it sucks. Like, I feel horrible every time I have to say, you know what, I can't do it, but uh, it's just time restraints. I would... I liked, I asked them actually, I went to them and said, hey, can you set up this time? So at least when someone comes up to me and they say, hey, can you do this? I can say no, but I'm doing it at this time. If you get in line early enough, you can, you know, I can sign it. Um, I'm hoping, I want to talk to the MLG guys. I know some of the other more popular players have complained about it as well. I want to try to set up so we each have a good amount of time where we can say, you know, we'll do it here and we can't promise you anything, but if you get in line early enough, you can for sure get an autograph. That way, you know, the hardcore fans that really, really want it, they you know, they wait in time, then they can get it for sure. So, I mean, <laughs> I wish I had more time, but, you know, I have to do other stuff too. Uh, people called you more or less the Western savior for, for killing and winning some uh, against Koreans. Mm -hmm. Who do you think, except you, are capable of winning a big tournament? For example, MLG Anaheim at the moment. Because the Koreans are totally dominating, as you described. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't think the chances are good for anybody, even myself, but I think a lot of a lot of the players have a chance, like probably most people would say, like me, Idra, Nanawa, um, most of my teammates are pretty capable of it. Uh, just really the big names, I guess. Uh, I can't really think of anybody off the top of my head besides the, those are the first ones that come to mind. So, But I think I think a lot of, like Todd beat Alicia. Alicia's mm. a really strong player. Alicia just beat uh, MC in the previous GSL PVP and then Todd beat him 4-2 twice in two def different best of threes, uh, so I think there's a lot of people that can do it, but the Koreans are always going to be favored at this point. Uh, do you have any takes on SK bringing in the MC and NADA? Like, uh, it's a kind of different cooperation between OGS and SK that you have with uh, Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's good for the players, but um, what, what is the deal, do you think? Um, Basically, my perspective of it, and I'm not sure if I'll get in trouble for saying this, but from most people that know the scene, it's known anyway, so I'll just say it. Uh, Koreans don't really get what they deserve skill-wise. Uh, Koreans are the best players, and almost every Korean doesn't get salary or anything like that, and uh, a lot of foreigners get salary. Sometimes it's not a lot. I know players should get more, obviously, um, but there's definitely a pay grade differential between casters, players, and then Korean players, and Korean players are getting the worst end of the deal, even though they're the most skilled, and that's majorly because the fan base out here is a lot bigger, mm. and foreigners are always going to cheer more for foreigners than Koreans. It's just the way it is. Same thing, Koreans are going to cheer for Koreans over foreigners. So, um, you know, I think it's just, it's good for SK, they get exposure, and they don't have to pick up a whole team by themselves and, you know, do this huge payoff, because they got into StarCraft 2 so late, basically to if they wanted to get in and get like a solid team, like Liquid has, or EG has, or Dignitas has, or Mouse, or you know whatever this other team, they would have to pay a shit ton of money because there isn't really a lot of good players that don't have teams right now. So that means they would have to go around buying players, which is really, really, really expensive. So I think they just would rather go this route, and you know they get two good names that they can bring to foreign tournaments. They can wear SK. They can go to their sponsors. Say hey. We got these players, they won this tournament. You know? And uh, the players, like Nada and uh, MC, basically have an easier way of getting the foreign tournament so they don't have to worry about paying for flights and OGS doesn't have to shell out more money on top of you know paying for the house and everything else. So, uh, As I understood it, most of the Koreans' teams are, are like trying to divide it, spread it out to all players, at least the A players. Have there been some, uh, some problems with the Nada and MC getting like a special deal, or has that been okay with everybody? I think that's been pretty much okay. I mean, they posted the results. They the, the both biggest names. Uh, I think everybody understands that. Even then, like the dream hack I went to way back when with Top and Inca, they still get shots. Uh, there's we're hoping for the OGS players to other OGS players to make it out to some tournaments. It's just you know, if SK takes care of Nada and MC, then it's all more likely that other players are going to get to go as well. 
here's a question about Nada. Is he done with school now? Because he did school because to skip military or something like that? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if that's why he did it, but yeah, he's in school. I think he's still in school. I know right now he's in vacation in Japan, I think. Okay. And then he's going to assembly. So uh, I don't I don't think he's done with school. I'm not sure. Three upcoming match, it's either Hi Pro or Show, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who do you think you will face and what do you think of that game? I think I'll play hey Pro, and I think I'll win. I'll even be going into it 2-1 ahead. And I, he, he just gets really nervous around me. He plays pretty good. He plays like he plays the same style as Dongergu, just a little bit worse. And I think he still has a lot of nerve issues. Like He's a smart enough player where he knows he, what he should do. He just freezes sometimes and doesn't do it. And a lot of people have that issue. And uh, hopefully he gets past it. I mean... I don't know, but I expect to win. And the game after that, if you would defeat Hapro or Show? I think I'd play Rhett or Gonzi. I mean, ah, it's, okay. like, it's like judging who wins out of who wins, but I think it would probably end up being Rhett or Gonzi. Okay, good luck in the tournament Thank and you. final words or shout outs? Uh, TeamLiquid.net, TeamLiquidPro.com, the little app factory.com, uh, my Twitter at Lauringer Chris, um, all my fans, family, uh, love you, fans, everything, and Razor. That's it. Thank you. Good luck.